right, ladies and gentlemen, what is up? Well, we are on a kind of a little bit of later schedule. I was going to actually start about an hour ago, but I fell asleep. And as usual, you know, that's just kind of how the way things go. As I am checking my feed here. And uh, glad you guys could be with me up on a late Monday night. Well, like I said, I'm on call for a graveyard shift tonight. And I was just kind of chilling out, relaxing, trying to get some sleep. Fell asleep for a couple hours. And then, uh, so it is almost 11. So I figured I better get in here and do some podcasting. I uh, get this message in, get this message on the air, folks, and uh, so I appreciate you guys being here, Life Grace Ministries, Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here live, speaking life through God's grace, amen. How you guys doing? You got your coffee? You got your big book of love? Do you got your pens and your pencils? And you got your notebook tablets, of course? Uh, we're going to keep going right into the book of Matthew. And parts of John, uh, just the first uh, first part of this, chapter one, as well as uh, now I got shifted over to Ecclesiastes today, uh, which is uh, or in Romans I guess too. Um, it's not uh, unusual for the shifts to happen like that. Um, as I get more and more uh, in to the spirit and in tuned to the spirit now that's the difference because i am uh, i've got a, a personal relationship with christ and not a religion i spoke about that before uh it is a difference between uh, a religion and uh which most people have they've got a religion they got something to go go do on the weekends uh, you know, instead of a relationship, personal relationship with Christ. And that is the difference. This is why I'm being shifted so much. Uh, as I get more in tune, as I get more uh, revelation knowledge, let's get this uh, headsets in there so I can hear a little bit better. There we go. Uh, adjusting uh, the mixer and getting everything on key here. Um, and so, you know, folks, uh, that is a difference. There is a difference between a religion and a personal relationship with God. Now, which one do you got? Which one are you getting? Uh, who's feeding you? Are you getting the right food from your pastor, from your preacher, your minister, or your uh, teacher? Folks, that is a difference. Go find yourself a faith-based grace based church with the right food to feed your soul as we are uh in a hurting uh you know this this world's broken folks i'm telling you uh the world's broken and uh we need a savior we got to get in there and get our food uh as uh you know as i was studying reading uh it's pretty amazing so I, this is this is to be expected uh, of of the souls. I I don't know how to put the words, folks. Um, as I'm kind of kind of just checking the mic, I wanted to see if this thing was actually working, but um, well, I got the page, but apparently it is. So I'll, I'll check it out in a little bit. So you know, we start. We got a coffee. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I'm just uh, folks. I am so. Uh, so just like excited to be preaching and ministering this word to you um you know it's it doesn't matter it's not about me it doesn't matter uh how tired i get how uh, sleepy i get uh it doesn't matter how little sleep i get you know i, I basically run on about two or three hours of sleep in a 24-hour period and this this life is is awesome um it's in abundance um as i received everything back in abundance by having faith as i'm just adjusting my my uh my back brace i don't need it but it's there it's nice it's convenient so uh you know folks like i said 
I'm kind of turning up my volume here a little bit. There we go. I actually got a, uh, a really nice mixture like I was talking to you about that before. Um, and let's see, let's see if I can move around a little bit more. I got this great little captain's chair. Uh, and so sometimes I have to kind of adjust, uh, you know, just to get comfortable. We're going to just get comfortable. Sit down at the coffee table, grab our Bibles, get your coffee or some juice, something to drink, you know, just some, uh, some chill out time with God. Praise God. Amen. How are you doing? All right, well, folks, I got a lot to cover. Um, like I said, I'm going to be about 11:30 for about 30 minutes or so. I'm going to be over at Blog Talk Radio. Um, I tried to put it off till midnight, but uh, apparently there's a limited, very limited time. They won't let you adjust. It's a very, I think the first episode's about uh, four or five in the morning. I ain't getting up that early. I'll be working. Well, maybe. I will know in probably about 12, uh, probably 12.30, whether I'm working at 2 o'clock in the morning. And if I don't go to work, I'm going to be disappointed. But uh, I'll probably just relax for a little bit and probably load up another podcast. Uh, you know where you can find me. LifeGraceMinistry60 at gmail.com is the official email site for Life Grace Ministries, folks. Uh, and uh, then you know uh, Rabble TV, YouTube, uh, Ustream, Live Stream, that'll be Ustream TV, and then Live Stream, and then Blog talk radio check it out folks i'm still learning on that site it's it's got a lot of little uh, tweaks in it little situation things going on it's kind of weird but i'm working on it so let's get into uh into the word folks how you guys doing do you have uh your uh, armor on um are you supplied uh, as we feed the need um, all right, well, let's get these glasses on so I can see. Uh, you can't forget the word is God. Do not lose sight of that word. Uh, no weapons formed against us. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. That's what happens. I'm alive on here. Let's get back into the word here. No weapons formed against us uh, shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against us in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me. What? Says the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 54, 17. We need a personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, and not just a religion. Or not a religion. We don't need a religion. You got plenty of religions. Try a relationship, a personal relationship with the with God. Amen. Oh man, folks, what are you guys doing? What is up? It is Monday night. Thank God it's Monday. I figured I better get on here because I posted a. Uh, you know, I set this up earlier. And then, you know, the days go just the way they go. Uh, and then so I posted that, uh, thank God it's Monday, which I'll be doing. There's different colors, there's different signs, there's different things going on, which is pretty cool. So on my Monday broadcast, I'm going to be doing those, uh, you know, the uh, thank God uh, it is Monday, but different ones, different kind of changing around a little bit. So I thought that'd be cool. So I got Romans 5 1. Folks, you know where that says what that says and where that's at. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Do you have peace with God, folks? Are you at peace? Or is your life jacked up? We can't be doing that. We know God. We know what's in our hearts. God knows what's in our hearts. I'm going to be getting this in a minute here. Uh, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand 
and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. And you know what perseverance does? Character. And character hope. And now, hope does not disappoint. I knew that. Because, and you ask, and you ask me why. And you say, minister, why does hope not disappoint? Well, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Ain't that good news, folks? Ah, it makes you feel warm and fuzzy all over, doesn't it? Giving you that warm closeness, personal feeling of uh, the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And then I went over to 2 Timothy 1, 6-9. I tell you, the Holy Spirit was on it today. I got shifted left and right. So here we go. It's just a couple little things. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God by the laying on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. What did I say? Didn't I just say that? He did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Got to mark that down, man. Telling you. Uh, man, and of a sound mind. Be not, though, therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Amen. Um, now, it reads... Uh, not, let's see, let's go back here. Uh, according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Wow. Talk about a revelation. In Jude, we see, in 120, we see, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Are you praying in the Holy Ghost, folks? Are you? That's all you got to just ask yourself. Are you praying in the Holy Ghost? Uh, let's see. Um, in Colossians 1, which is this, in verse 24, it's a sacrificial service for Christ. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the full, our faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all God's people. And in Philippians 2.8, now we backtracked a little bit. Now this should have been, actually what I was going to do is retract this a little bit or rewrite this here um, and uh, go back uh, just because it kind of went backwards here. Uh, Philippians 2.8 and 11 through 11, And being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross, I believe that'd be on the cross. I think that's supposed to be on the death on the cross. Makes sense. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. Uh, which is above every name that at the time, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God uh, the Father. Amen. And you know what Philippians 4.13 says, folks? I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Amen. All right. So let's get, let's see. Let's go back. You know, I got a hundred tons of notes in here. It, uh, I don't know if that actually is a word, but, you know, hundreds, hundreds. Um, so I always try to retract here a little bit, kind of go back. Um, uh, uh, um, well, we know, we know, we know. Um, well, you know, these aren't in order. Um, I just get them and write them as I get them. So I don't really, uh, keep tra you know, I guess I should re kind of re go through here. All right, here we go, folks. So if you are hurting, if you uh, are in a dark place in your life, Folks, I got the antidote. I got the cure for you. Just believe in God. And let's go into the sinner's prayer, folks. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. Let's get this microphone so I can actually hear myself. There we go, folks. How is that? All right. Well, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Amen. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Lord and that God raised you from the dead. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart clean and come and live in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me to walk with you and live for you the rest of my life. I thank you for saving me and for giving me the gift of eternal life in heaven with you. Amen, folks. Let's get into the book of Matthew, shall we? Let's read some scripture. Uh, all right, let's get this uh, little podium, this little fancy thing in here so uh hopefully i don't get the you know get this knocked over here um well let's see it's not stable enough but it works it it uh gives me what i need to read here folks um so in john um da, 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 let's go into this one how about let's jump we'll jump into 14 folks how is that for some action here you know god is just waiting for us to say action. You know when they start in those movies and they get the, the scene set up and everybody's still and quiet and they're all concentrating on everything and then they raise the little little marker and it goes three, two, one. Action. Well, God's just sitting waiting for you to say action. Are you in action with the word? You know, you could have a library full of books. But until you pick them up and read them, they're just nothing but looks to something to look at. Just books. You gotta read your word, folks. You gotta stay in that word. Activate that word, folks. I'm telling you. Personal experience. Getting real, getting transparent with you. Hey, Amen. My hands to God. I'm telling you, if you don't apply it. And you sit there and you stare at the wall with all that stuff going on, folks. Your life's going to be jacked up. And, but if you apply it and actually uh, speak life through God's grace, amen, because we are saved by the grace. So let's jump in to a couple of verses here. Uh, let's see, into, uh, that would be John 14 and 19 and 20. Now I tell you before it come, that when it has come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. 
Oh my God, folks, I'm telling you, there is some things going on. We Let's see, where did I go on this one? All right, let's start out with John. You know where this is? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of the men. And the light shineth in darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. Wow. That's an eye opener. And you know what? You know what that word is. You know what you gotta apply this, folks. I'm telling you, all this stuff, all this information, folks, this is why the motivation that I needed. Uh, you know, I was just kind of struggling along, just kind of going day by day, not really having any agenda, no plans, no uh, real life. Um, and then clearly, as it should be, I was catapulted into the supernatural, uh, pole vaulted, and thrown into uh, the gospel, into the salvation of God's grace, amen. And so when you sit there and you, you know, just kind of dwell on things, but you don't take any action, you know, it's kind of like lip service. I guess you just kind of talk and never do nothing about it. Well, I have been given such an opportunity to, uh, to get this word out, folks. I've been given everything provided by God to get this message out. Um, and like I said always before, folks, this is the least I, uh, I, can, I can do. This is the least that I can give back that, to those that gave. And, uh, you know, those, I, I just need to, uh, you know, I get into this little, kind of this little weird mood things every once in a blue moon. But as soon as I get into it, I get right out of it. There's no reason to be walking around here with your head down. Uh, those of you, those of us that know, those of us that have been born again, uh, you know, there's no reason for us to be acting like that. We know too much, folks. As we rely more on God and more, less of ourselves and more on Him. It's true, folks. Apply it. Apply that word until, uh, consume the word until the word consumes us. Amen. Because you know the devil's a liar. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But we got grace, unmerited, unearned, undeserved. It is a free gift of God, folks. And we need to apply that word. I'm learning myself, folks, and so you know, you know, if you listen to all these, the uh, podcasts and the archives and everything, I'm learning. I'm getting better. It's by the grace of God for thou I walk, not in the shadow. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I'll go into that later. That's a whole nother thing. Um, all right, let's go into. Let's see if I can get my notes cleared and out of the way. Folks, we're already in chapter 18, talking about moving right along, and I'm going to be back over here tomorrow. I'm going to be over at Blog Talk Radio, Ustream TV, Livestream TV, hitting up YouTube on the weekends. i got to still work out that bug that day for Livestream, and uh, I don't know why, for some reason, I did a YouTube Live, and uh, the audio was pretty not good. It sounded good on my tablet, but... It didn't sound so good on me uh, on the uh, on the computer, so I don't know what's up with that. There's something sounds like it was on bubbles, bubbles, tiny bubbles in my computer. Not good. Not. I'm gonna work on that. Uh, I lay hands on it right now and I cast it out. Amen. Oh, and a special shout out to Evangelist who's back on the air. Uh, watch the show. It's awesome. Uh, appreciate you guys. Um, so right back at you. Appreciate you. Don't. Go changing. Don't, uh, you know, we, we're, those that are, those that know and those that have been born again, the attacks will happen uh, because those that are doing the attacking just don't know the truth. And so they're still operating in the flesh. I know, I'm going to, this is comfortable. I, I, everything I say, they're going to go, oh, Minister, what are you talking about? 
Well, I know what I'm talking about because I've got the Word of God right here, folks. The King James Version, the Amplified, and the New King. But I have been reading out. This is so... Uh, it's There's so much more in it. I'm, I'm actually learning. I'm applying what I learned. And so, like I said, folks, we come up against darkness, the, the you know, the principalities, all that stuff. Uh, not wrestle against flesh, but against principalities uh, and of the darkness of this world. And so those that have the armor, you're going to be all right. Those that are in the flesh and want to take pot shots at people and take, you know, attack and try to drag stuff out, you need to be saved. You need a savior. And I know I'm always going to get attacked. I got called a, a, a Satanist by a Catholic. Wow. Really? Is that all you got? Yeah, I'm not trying to pick fights with somebody. I didn't start the fire. I am a firm believer and a follower of Christ. And I stand on that. Uh, so there you go. Uh, and don't send no hate mail because I'm just going to love you anyway. Or, you know, I, I just let God handle it. I'm going to give it to God because he, he, can, he can handle it, folks. I'm telling you, give your problems and your issues to God. If you'll wake up in a bad mood, give that mood to God. He'll take care of it. And then you can just rest all your burdens upon Him. Take all that stuff off your shoulder. Push it away. Give it to God. Let God take it. He'll get you back to your... Uh, he'll, well, I don't know what the word is, folks, but there's a word in there somewhere. There's somewhere I was going with that. I was going somewhere. Uh, he is our healer or antidote. There you go. That's all you need to know. He is our healer. You got to trust him, folks. Trust and believe. Amen. Folks, how are you guys doing? We are just doing a little short one tonight. I, uh, I'm on, uh, on call for Graveyard tonight. Uh, so I am, uh, I'll know in about, uh, about an hour and a half whether I'm working graveyards or not. Otherwise, I'm going to be right back here rambling, talking about God. Uh, sitting in my easy chair, um, watching, uh, well, actually not watching nothing. I'm going to be reading my Bible. That's what you should be doing. Are you reading your Bible, folks? Are you in the Word? Um, all right, let's get into, uh, where are we at, folks? St. Matthew, chapter 18, in the King James Bible version. Thanks for that, Pastor, by the way, my, uh, his friend up there. Oh my God, are you in the word, folks? Did you get your coffee going? You know, it's only 11 o'clock. It's a Monday night. Are you relaxing with God? Are you sitting in your easy chair? Or are you at the coffee table? Are you just sitting on the floor in front of a fireplace with your Bible, kicking back, got your drink going on, you got your Bible going on? <coughs> There's that devil. He's trying to squash my voice again, and that's what happened in December last year. I tried to give me that... Um, I tried to give me that flu bug, but I rejected it on the name of Jesus' name. Uh, amen. You know, that's what he tries to do. He tries to get in there to kill, steal, and destroy. Take our joy, take our, uh, our life. But by the power invested by God, I command the devil to be gone. Cast away, thrown out. He has no uh, no authority over me, no authority over my vocals. I will not bow down. For my God is God, my only God. For we worship only one God, folks. All right, well, you know how, I just kind of shake things up a lot. I do things a little different. I'm like your normal, uh, your normal minister here. Um, as, uh, you know, I kind of do things a little bit different. This isn't, like I said, I don't know what the word normal is anymore. Uh, I'm just out here uh, preaching and ministering the word to you folks, so I hope you get it. And if you get over on YouTube, go ahead and hit like. Uh, hit those uh, subscription buttons. If you get what I am uh, preaching to you folks. So, all right, well, let's finish this out. Let's read, just get into chapter 18, folks, and then I'll reschedule for a couple hours. I actually kind of cut myself short a little bit trying to get ready. Um, so in chapter 18, it reads, At the same time, 
came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Uh, and Jesus called a little child unto him. He did. And set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as the little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in the name receive me. Temptations of sin. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, uh, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must uh, needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye, thine eye, there we go, offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Now here we go. We're going to continue. I just want to repeat that. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. And he hears that word by the preacher. Do you not hear the word, folks? The lost sheep. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Folks, if you're lost, we got the antidote. We got the, uh, the answer for you. Trust in God with all your heart. Be not ashamed of the gospel. Uh, how think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them had uh, begone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which has gone astray? All right, so just marking notes here. And that is, uh, that's a good parable, huh? Uh, and if so that be, he find it. Verily I say unto you, he rejoice more of that sheep, the one sheep that lost, got lost, he found. Uh, and seeketh that which is gone astray. Okay, backtrack here. There we go. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiced more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went out astray. You kind of feel like that sometimes, folks. You know, you kind of feel like uh, just like a lost sheep. Uh, kind of just floating around, not really sure what you're doing. Uh, but, you know, there is a way. He is the way, the light, and the life. No one comes through him. but Or no one gets to the Father except through him. There we go. I know the verses. I know the chapters. I know what it reads, folks. I tell you, I know what it means. I really do. Um, so, in uh, 14, Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if thy brother trespass against thee, go and tell him his, uh, what does that say, his fault between thee and him alone. If, uh, if he shall see thee here, or thou hast gained thy brother, but if he will not hear thee, then take with one or thee one or two more, and in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. 
But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto uh, thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whosoever ye shall uh, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And that is in, uh, that would be Matthew 18 and 20, folks. We know that that is a key. Uh, and that's what I'm marking here, folks. So I know where they're at. I know what scriptures are. Jesus speaks of forgiveness. Then came Peter to him and saw, where am I at? This book, this Bible's awesome. It just is creased in the center and I can't really read it. So, so then came Peter came, came to Peter. Let's get back. In. Come on, Holy Spirit. I know you're there. Then came Peter to him. There we go. Amen. And said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Uh, nope. That's not it. Jesus saith unto him, I say not uh, unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Did you get that, saints? Uh, did you get that right there, folks? Not seven times, but 70 times seven. That's how many times you need to forgive. If you can't do that, God's, how is God going to forgive you? Amen. Therefore is the kingdom of, uh, of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay his Lord, uh, had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. And his wife and his children. Oh, good grief. And all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant uh, was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went out and cast him into prison, Till he should pay the debt. Ah, this fellow's in for a lot of hurting. I can see that until he's in for some trouble. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, there was very, they were very sorry, and came and told, uh, and told unto the Lord, their Lord, all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all that debt because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Well, and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tempters till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, 
If ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Uh, oh, wow. So we're going to start real quick here, folks, just a little bit. And then I'm going over to Blog Talk Radio. Check it out. By the time you get this, uh, I'll have already been on Blog Talk. So a little bit of time delay, but I'm going to be doing some live stuff here. Um, starting at chapter 19 here. And it came to pass, this is Jesus' teaching. Now, this just goes into divorce, folks. This is real relevant relevant uh, to a lot of people out there that have gone, you know, that have dealt with this and, and had to deal with this. Um, this is biblically speaking on divorce, uh, Jesus and the children and the rich man ruler. So we'll just get into the first few parts of uh, chapter 19 then I'm going to close out real quick and then jump over to Blog Talk Radio check it out it's a live nightly show about 30 minutes it gives it's awesome I, I appreciate the site and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings uh, let's see did I I did jump that holy cow well let's backtrack on this folks uh, let's see if I did that uh, let me see um, yep, I did. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. All right, take a deep breath. Here we go real quick, folks. Chapter 19. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these things, he departed from Galilee and came unto the coast of Judea. Finally, or beyond Jordan, not finally, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Well, we're going to get to that, folks. As uh, I am trying to get, uh, to get my notes. Well... Folks, this has been fun. I know we're uh, we're jumping here a little bit um, as I'm going to be going over to uh, Blog Talk Radio. We're just going to get into this. I'm just going to read, and then I'm just going to close out real quick. And the great multitudes followed him and healed, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came from unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, uh, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall a man leave a father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put us under. All right, so I think that we are going to start back up tomorrow. Go into chapter, or verse, or let's see, verse 7. Um, uh, let's see if I get this correct here. Uh, all right, you guys, this has been fun. I love doing this. Um, I kind of, like I said, folks, I kind of, uh, Got my uh, my timing a little bit off here. Uh, I was working on something and I got lost a track of time here. Um, amen, folks. This has been good. I appreciate you guys jumping up here with me. Uh, I got so much more to talk about, folks. We're going to be back tomorrow. Check out Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Rabble TV, Life Grace Ministries. Remember, remember... My CBN, ULC Ministries Network. Uh, also, uh, what is it? Life Grace Ministries 60 at gmail.com is the official, the official site, email site for Life Grace Ministries. Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here live on the net radio going over to Blog Talk uh, on the upper hill in the upper room at Life Grace Studios. Uh, in the really crispy, cool Monday night. It is Monday almost over, folks. We're in the work week. You guys have a good day. Have a good week. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out Facebook and Twitter. I'll be adding these to it. You guys 
uh, are so awesome. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for all the, uh, the uh, increase in the numbers. Uh, I'm going to keep feeding you. I just, just trust God, folks. God is the healer. He's our antidote. He is uh, our everything, and we need him. We need the Savior. So this is Life Grace Ministries, and Minister Preacher Rick Rowley, coming to you live. We're going to be uh, setting up another one. I'll be back on the air tomorrow night. You guys tune in. I'll be doing a two-hour special, maybe over two hours. i got a lot to cover in Matthew. And then I'm going to go back into Ecclesiastes. And then i got some stuff in Romans and some stuff in John. Oh, my God. All right, folks. Love you guys. Take it easy. Life Grace Ministries. Minister Preacher Rick Rowley here. Live, speaking life through God's grace. Talking to you again real, real, real soon. Uh, find my mouse here. Oops. And uh, there we go. Well, I kind of clicked my uh, clicked my mouse off here, so I kind of couldn't find where I was at. Uh, all right, you guys have a good night. Take it easy. I'll talk to you soon.